Hello, welcome to everyone. In the today's class also we will continue the electric field and electric uh, potential. Okay. <coughs> the yesterday's class we <coughs> already discussed the electric potential. We gave the concept of electric potential. What is electric potential and all those things. Okay. First of all, I will give you the plan of today's class. Yeah, you can see here the outline of today's class. <clears throat> the concept of equipotential surface. Okay. We will discuss advantages of potential concept. Next, uh, relationship between the electric potential and electric field. And finally, we will discuss about the potential energy or the interaction energy of the uh, system of uh, charges. Okay, this is the outline of today's uh, lecture. Okay. First of all, let us try to uh, recall what is uh, pot electric potential, what is potential difference. Okay, basically what is uh, electric potential? Electric potential is basically is basically an electric work. Okay. What is the definition of uh, electric potential? Exact definition? Yeah, <coughs> it is this we already covered in the yesterday's class. Yeah, it is the amount of uh, electrostatic work done to bring a unit positive charge to a certain point in the electric field. Okay. To define the electric potential, <coughs> what we have done, what we have to do, we have to fix the electric potential arbitrary at some other point. Okay. So, we can always determine the electric potential up to, uh, <coughs> up to an arbitrary constant. So, to remove, to remove this arbitrariness, what we consider generally is at the infinity, whenever your arc tend to infinity, we set the potential to be uh, 0, potential to be uh, 0, okay, right. See, whenever a point is there at the infinity from the charge, there we set the potential to be uh, 0. Okay, it is the most uh, natural choice no field and no potential there. Okay, right. So, what is the actual exact definition we always give? So, to bring the work needed to bring a unit positive charge from infinity to a point in the electric field is known as the electric potential. We also wrote the formula for the electric potential of a of a point charge, electric potential of a point charge. For the electric field, we have one formula. We write the similar formula for electric uh, potential. That is uh, V, We denoted this uh, electric potential to be phi in the previous class. See, this phi uh, is equal to 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught q by r. So, what is the difference between this formula and the formula for the electric potential? At the same, a uh, formula for the electric field at the same point. This is the formula for electric potential. We have the similar formula for the electric field at the same point situated at the distance r. What is the difference between these two formulas? The only difference you observe here is in the denominator instead of r square you have here r. That is what the uh, difference between those two formulas of a point charge. Okay? This is the formula. Uh, applicable for the potential of a point uh, charge. This we have done also. Okay. What are the uh, SI units of potential? Volt, V. Units for the potential 
is V. Volt V. Volt V. Okay. Right. Uh, this is a formula for the potential of a point charge. Uh, see, next uh, we have to discuss about this equipotential uh, surfaces. Equipotential surfaces. See, you have some lines for the field. Similarly, you have some lines for the potential as well in the electric field. Okay. Here, the electric field lines of a point charge move away from that charge. Okay, they are open. But here, equipotential surfaces are the closed lines encircling that positive charge, whatever that may be. Okay. See, these, these, are, these are something like counters, we call them as. Okay. We have uh, uh, similar lines in uh, what we call the geography also. Okay. Isoboric uh, and all those lines will be there, same temperature lines, same pressure lines. Okay. Similarly, these lines, these surfaces, actually uh, here in the slide you see them as lines, but actually in three dimensions, okay, field uh, fills the three dimensional space. That is why your lines are nothing but in three dimensions spheres, spheres encircling that uh, charge, surfaces encircling that uh, in it positive uh, charge, okay, right. Here, uh, what is the definition of uh, uh, this equipotential surface? Equipotential surface. See, the meaning is there in the word itself. These surfaces are such that at each and every point on that surface, the potential is same. Wherever you go on a equipotential surface, you will find the same potential you will find the same potential. If you are drawing such lines or such, if you are imagining such surfaces in an electric field, then these surfaces are known as the equipotential surfaces. Okay? Equipotential surface is a, a locus of all the points having the same potential. Okay? Same potential. Right? Here also, all the points situated from the same, situated at the same distance will be having the same potential. Okay? Right. In this uh, symmetrical case, you have the equipotential surfaces as curves, that means curved surface spheres, spheres like uh, uh, spherical shells, okay? encircling that uh, charge, encircling that uh, charge. Okay, here uh, in this slide you can see you can see the uh, equipotential surfaces lines dotted lines are there the thick lines are electric field lines the lines the dotted lines encircling uh, this positive charge are the equipotential uh, surfaces actually this is also a concept equipotential surface is also a concept. See, we are imagining uh, some surfaces such that at each and every point on that surface the potential is same. All such surfaces are known as a equipotential surfaces in the electric field, in the electric field. Okay? These surfaces are also imaginary, field lines are also uh, imaginary. But uh, to understand these concepts and make use of them, we are imagining these things, field lines and force lines or equipotential uh, surfaces. Okay. See, what is the use of uh, drawing these equipotential surfaces? What is the importance of uh, uh, this equipotential surfaces? What is the condition to draw the equipotential surface? Here, the potential have to be 
same on each and every point of the equipotential surface. Potential has to be same, potential has to be same. Okay. See, if there is no potential difference, suppose that you are selecting two points on a equipotential surface. Say, this is a positive uh, charge Q, okay. you are taking one equipotential uh, surface here. Yeah, this is a equipotential uh, surface okay. encircling this charge. This is the equipotential uh, surface. In this surface or on, on this equipotential surface, you are selecting two points, say 1, uh, 2. Okay. You are taking one charge from here to here, from here to here. Actually, it is a surface, three dimensional object. Okay. You are taking one object from 1 to 2. How much electrostatic work is needed? How much electrostatic work is needed? Yeah. See, potential is the work done on the unit positive charge. If there is Q coulombs of charge, then how much work is needed? For unit charge, you need for the displacement of unit charge between the two points, you need the work equal to the potential. If you want to displace the Q Coulomb's charge, if you want to move the Q Coulomb's charge from point 1 to point 2, then how much work is needed? That work W dW is equal to Q Coulomb's na Q into phi Q into phi because for one coulomb charge this much of work is needed okay for for one coulomb charge this much of work is need, this much of work is needed for q coulombs q phi q phi work is needed q phi work is needed okay q phi work is needed yeah if it is d phi if you write here d phi, it becomes d w, d w. Okay. So how much work is needed? How much work is needed to displace the particle from point one to point two? Uh, Q uh, d phi means you say this is phi one minus phi two. This, the potential at this point, say let us call phi one. Potential at this point, let us call as phi two. For equal, according to the definition of equipotential surface, since phi one is equal to phi two, here an equipotential surface phi one is equal to phi two. Therefore, therefore, you have d w is equal to dW is equal to Q, uh, say this thing is equal to phi, okay. phi minus phi, both are same, that is equal to 0, that is equal to 0. So, without any effort, charge can move from one point to other point on the equipotential surface, equipotential surface. Okay. Now, when the work will be 0 actually in mechanics, W is equal to, in mechanics, W is equal to F into S, W is equal to F into S. When the work will be 0, S is a displacement, okay. this is equal to F S 
cos theta f s cos theta for what value of theta uh, this will be 0 for what value of theta it will be 0 for theta is equal to 90 for for theta is equal to 90 degrees 90 degrees you have w is equal to f uh, f dot s okay f into s okay f into s cos 90 means 0 into 0 so you have here 0 w is equal to uh, 0 w is equal to uh, 0 so here whenever this displacement and force are perpendicular then what happens total work becomes a zero in case of equipotential surfaces total work is a zero that means the work the force acting in the electric field is perpendicular to the equipotential surface on which the charge is moving that means at each every each and every point of the equipotential surface at each and every point on the equipotential surface electric field lines electric field lines will be passing perpendicular so at every point on the equipotential surface uh, the angle between that surface and a field line is 90 degrees field lines are intersecting perpendicular to that equipotential surface so what is the precondition to draw these equipotential surfaces you have to draw the equipotential surfaces such that yeah the surface is perpendicular to the field line local field line okay right so what are the characteristics of equipotential surfaces these surfaces are perpendicular to the electric field lines perpendicular to the electric field lines if you want to displace the charge from if you want to displace the charge from uh, this is a here you are having one charge plus q okay right you have to uh, here there is some electric field here you have field lines here okay you have field lines here okay all of them are moving out all of them are moving out Yeah, you have some ah, charge here, okay. Field lines are uh, okay, passing like this, okay. Yeah, here you have so many equipotential surfaces. Say this is one equipotential surface, a this is some another equipotential uh, surface you want to move the charge see the potential of uh, this equipotential surface is phi 1 the potential of this equipotential surface is uh, phi 2 phi 2 now you want to move the charge see along this line okay or it may be the direction of motion of the charge may be uh, like this or like this okay less than 90 degrees let us call that uh, the direction of uh, motion of the charge may be arbitrary okay theta okay in that case what happens how much uh, work is done if this line this theta is exactly if this theta is this is 90 if uh, 
the displacement is along the surface of this line the this is e direction of e the angle is 90 degrees in this case you have zero electrostatic work okay if it is uh, less than 90 then you have non zero work so if this dl let us call this s or dl or ds okay yeah if this s displacement is in the direction of field okay then what happens theta becomes zero then you have w is equal to q ah w is equal to ah q what is f into s na f into f into s okay uh, this is f s cos 0 if your charge is uh, moving along the field line this is 0 so you have then maximum work okay so in this case maximum work is done whenever you move the charge along the field line or the force line then the maximum amount of work is uh, done okay maximum amount of work okay this is a mag maximum value and this is a minimum value whenever you move the charge from one surface to other surface in this direction then the maximum work is done whenever you move the charge on the surface of uh, any one equipotential surface then the minimum amount of work is done that is zero that is uh, zero okay here you see actually we have one formula for that na what is that q psi 1 minus q phi 1 minus phi 2 okay now phi 1 is different initial position is on the equipotential surface having potential phi 1 final position is on the equipotential surface having potential phi 2 now your work is equal to q phi 1 minus phi 2 phi 1 is different from phi 2 that's why you have the non zero work in this case non zero work in this case okay right what are the uses of these equipotential surfaces here in this slide you can see uh, the two diagrams okay here these lines are uh, uh, equally separated these surfaces okay here uh, these equipotential surfaces are not uh, equally spaced the gap between them is varying okay if you are uh, <coughs> drawing these uh, equipotential uh, surfaces such that the difference between difference between uh, the difference between the potentials is same hmm? then the density of uh, this equipotential surface or, or the circles you curves you see in the slide will give you the intensity of the electric field intensity of the electric field here immediate to the uh, charge you find in this slide very densely populated uh, uh, lines equipotential surface that means in the immediate vicinity of this charge here you see the more intense field that means field intensity intensity of the electric field is high whenever they are uh, uh, located very sparsely then uh, you think that there the electric field intensity is uh, very small very small compared to uh, this this area okay in this way you can use the equipotential surfaces uh, to know the field intensity 
Okay. The same thing can be done with the help of field lines, but you can also use uh, the equipotential surfaces, equipotential surfaces to find the electric field intensity hmm, just by seeing them, okay. just uh, by seeing them. Okay. Here for, for small displacement, you see here the in the second uh, figure, this equipotential surfaces are very near to each other here. Okay. Here they are uh, very sparsely separated. Okay. See here to move between two equipotential surfaces, moving the charge between two equipotential surfaces amounts to smaller displacement of the charge. If you are considering the equipotential surfaces away from the charge, there for the same amount of work you can move with the charge up to a large distance. Why? Because the distance between them is uh, more here compared to the distance between uh, equipotential surfaces very near to the uh, charge. Okay. Yeah. That, that shows you the electric field strength is more at the immediate vicinity of the charge. The electric uh, field intensity is very small at the farthest uh, places. Okay. That is, this is what the use of uh, equipotential surfaces, equipotential surfaces. Okay. So, you can use the equipotential surfaces to guess the electric field intensity at a place in the electric field, electric field. Okay. Whenever you are very close to the charge, by, by doing the same amount of work, you can only move a charge a little bit. But if you are away uh, from the charge, then for the same amount of work, you can move the same charge up to a very large uh, distance. Okay, right. This is about uh, equipotential surface, concept of uh, equipotential surfaces. Okay. See here, you are using uh, field lines to know the electric field intensity, you are using equipotential surfaces to know the electric field intensity at a point in the electric field. Then what is the use of uh, introducing electric potential, you are already having electric field field and potential are giving the same information of the electric field, but there are certain advantages of using the potential concept and equipotential uh, surfaces. Okay. What is the basic difference between electric field and electric potential? It is a work, potential is a work, electric work, electric potential is a electric work, work is a vector or scalar, work is a scalar, potential is a scalar, but electric field vector we are calling that as, that is a vector, electric field intensity is a vector, it is a scalar, scalar means number. In order to define a vector, if the motion is in three dimensions, we have to specify three numbers, x component, y component and z component. Three scalars are needed, three calculations are needed, but if it is a scalar, only one calculation is enough. That is why, that is why uh, we define electric potential even though we already have the electric field, concept of electric field. So, what are the advantages of uh, potential? concept. You can see hmm, uh, this on the slide. See, by using the potential concept, see potential is in, defined in terms of work. That is why the potential concept is very much helpful in order to find the electrostatic work. Okay. In engineering problems, they use uh, this potential concept very much to find the electric work easily to calculate the electric work easily. In some cases, that is the only way to calculate the electric uh, <coughs> electric work. Okay? 
right what is the formula we use for the calculation of the uh, electrical work w is equal to w is equal to R D W is equal to Q of D phi. This is the potential difference. Okay, this is the amount of work done. This is the amount of work done to displace the charge through the two points having the potential difference D phi. Potential difference D phi. Okay. You see, this is a, this is very much similar to F is equal to Q E. F is equal to Q E. This formula is very much similar to F is equal to Q E. Then W is equal here. You have Q phi. W is equal to Q phi. See, work is expressed in terms of potential force is expressed in terms of a uh, field by using this formula dw is equal to q d phi you can very easily calculate the electrostatic work done in moving a particle from a point 1 to point 2 having potentials phi 1 and phi 2 respectively okay so potential concept is very much helpful in calculating the electrostatic work okay next what is the other use of uh, potential concept why we are introducing potential after having the electric field already see in some cases you can apply you can apply the gas law okay wherever the symmetry is there but if you are having so many charges the system of charges then directly you have to uh, evaluate the total electric uh, uh, field total electric field okay e is equal to e1 plus e2 and so on that because e is a vector doing that will be very difficult in some cases so in that case we find the electric potential of the system then we use the relation between electric field and potential to calculate the electric field actually you, you may be intended to find the electric field but direct evaluation of e will be difficult why the answer is same why because e is a vector it is having uh, three components so you have to do three calculations three integrals okay but if it is a scalar only one calculation evaluating one integral is enough to find the to find the electric potential then by using the relation between e and phi field and potential led to a very simple relation you can easily calculate the electric field of the given charge distribution distribution so uh, these are the two main advantages of introducing the potential concept in the electro statics okay right what is the relation between uh, electric potential and the uh, electric field we already guessed in the previous class e to be grad phi gradient gradient of phi potential gradient of potential okay in the today's class let us systematically try to derive that relation that is relation between electric field and electric potential okay electric field and electric potential okay you can see on the slide the relation between e and phi okay now let us try to derive the relation between electric field and electric potential okay right 
So see force I, I just now I wrote the formula on the board. What is the relation between electrostatic force and electrostatic field? Uh, force. So that is what is the topic we are studying relation between E and phi E relation between E and phi ok right force acting on a particle means charge here force acting on a charge Q charge Q in the electric field E is what is the formula for that F is equal to F is equal to Q E F is equal to Q E right. Now let us try to find the electrostatic work for the displacement DL of the charge ok. Suppose that we want to move suppose that we want to move this charge up to a distance DL up to a distance DL. Then how much work is needed just now I told to you to move a unit positive charge to move a unit positive charge how much uh, work is needed that is equal to the potential that is equal to the uh, potential ok. Uh, first of all let us try to find the uh, work done to move the charge through DL distance directly work done to move the charge through DL through DL distance through DL distance DW that is denoted as DW DW is equal to F into S this is F ok F see this is ok yeah, vector F vector E this is scalar yeah F dot S means how much DL distance is DL ok distance is DL ok yeah now what is F say this is 1, say this is 2 using 1, using 1 you have dW is equal to dW is equal to Q F means Q E dot DL, Q E dot uh, DL that means Q into E dot DL. So, so now what is your DW work needed to displace the charge in the electric field E through the distance DL is DW is equal to QE into DL. Now you may take this Q onto this side that is you may or you may write this alternately as bring this Q to the denominator on the other side DQ by W is equal to E dot DL, E dot DL ok. What is DW by Q? Work done per the work done per unit charge ok. It is nothing but potential. We yesterday discussed that this work can be represented as the decrement in one quantity called uh, electric potential. So, this is the potential difference here you are having dw that is why I am writing d phi d phi corresponding potential difference that too we have to put here minus d phi decrement in the potential work is equal to this is equal to on this side what you are having 
p dot dl. So, what you have now? Here, yeah, minus of d phi minus of d phi is equal to e dot dl e dot dl minus of d phi is equal to e dot dl okay yeah now uh, <coughs> you are uh, expansion of this e dot dl gives modulus e modulus dl cos theta modulus dl cos theta okay what is this on this side you have d phi on this side you have d phi okay so just for e cos theta you are having how much minus of d phi by dl d phi by dl okay minus of uh, d phi by dl okay minus of d phi by dl now here we want to make use of the definition of the gradient okay this value is equal to this thing this will be maximum when theta is equal to when theta is equal to 0 when theta is equal to 0 that means uh, the displacement line dl is perpendicular perpendicular to the uh, equipotential surface two equipotential surfaces this line dl is connecting two equipotential surfaces okay this line is perpendicular to both equipotential surfaces in that case we may call this as a grad we may call this as a in that case this becomes e maximum value means e is equal to this becomes grad d, d phi by dl grad phi so finally we got the formula e is equal to grad phi e is equal to grad phi this is the relation between electric field e and potential phi okay you can see the same thing on the slide okay if you want yeah yeah so we got e is equal to minus of grad phi this is the relation between e and phi electric field and electric potential but here you find grad means only differentiation here this is the relation between e and phi e and phi in terms of in terms of differentials so this is called as differential form of the relation okay right now where where it is useful you can use this relation whenever the potential is given potential of the problem is given then you have to substitute you have to find the grad phi with minus sign then that will give you the electric field okay just now we discussed about that directly evaluating e will be difficult in that case we will evaluate potential phi first then we will find grad phi then grad phi with minus sign will give you the electric field okay otherwise you just uh, go for the previous step minus d phi okay minus d phi is equal to e d l cos theta is here na? e d l cos theta or simply you go for this step minus d phi is equal to e dot d l e dot d l right so d phi is equal to how much d phi is equal to d phi is equal to minus of d phi is equal to minus of e dl 
minus of E dl. d phi is equal to minus of E dl. Minus of E uh, dl with minus sign. Minus of E dl. So, what will be the phi? Therefore, phi is equal to therefore phi is equal to minus of integral e dot dl integral e dot dl see this is also will give you the relation between electric field and potential but here you are you are seeing the integrals so this is the integral form of the relation between electric field and potential when it is useful you can use this relation whenever you are already having E, then you want to find the potential. Okay, if you know the E, that means you know the potential that can be calculated by using this formula phi is equal to minus of integral E dot dl, which is the integral form of the relation. Okay, right. Now, after this uh, relation between electric potential and electric field, we will go for we will go for the interaction energy of the system of charges. Interaction energy of the system of charges. Okay, what is the interaction energy? So, after work, after the work, we are going to study about the electrostatic energy. Okay, you know that work and energy are the same. Okay. If you do some work on the system, that will store in the system as a energy. Okay. <coughs> here also the same thing happens here. Here you have to note the difference between total potential and it interaction, total interaction energy of the system. Okay. We are intended to find the interaction energy of the system of uh, uh, charges. Okay. Right, what is the formula for the potential of a point charge? You already know phi is equal to phi is equal to yeah, phi is equal to phi is equal to phi is equal to One by four pi epsilon naught q by r. Instead of r square, you have r. Instead of r square, you have r. Phi is equal to one by four pi epsilon naught q by r. Q by r. Yeah, this is a potential of a point charge. Okay. If you are having more than one point charge, then you have the system of charges. Then you have the system of charges. In that case, what will be the total potential? Suppose that phi 1 is the potential due to charge q 1, phi 2 be the potential due to charge q 2, then what will be the total potential? total potential. This way, this can be calculated by using the superposition principle in case of potential, superposition principle. Okay. See, to bring a unit charge from infinity into a arbitrary, up to a, an arbitrary point in the field, okay, we have to do some work. If there are more than one charge, if you are having two charges, three charges, then you have to do more work. Why? Because potential at, at that particular point will be more when, whenever, whenever there are more than one charge. Okay. The potential is due to, potential at that point is due to the all charges. So, what will be the potential at that point? Phi, total potential phi is equal to phi 1 plus phi 2 plus phi 3 
plus dash 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 phi is equal phi 1 plus phi 2 plus dash 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 okay yeah this here we are using super potential superposition principle superposition principle to find the total potential total potential okay see this uh, psi 1 potential is felt uh, by the charge due to the presence of due to the presence of charge q1 at this time we are ignoring to other two other charges q2 q3 whatever it may be next time we are going for the q2 and uh, taking its potential to be phi 2 and we are adding this here next time we are adding the potential of a third charge okay finally we get the total potential at a point in the electric field okay right this is okay this is very yeah, simple then what is the interaction energy of the system of charges interaction energy okay in order to find the interaction energy first of all you have to uh, consider only one charge at a place okay you have to consider only one charge at a place in the hmm, at a place in the space suppose that there is only one positive charge here q one positive charge here q what is this plus q you are having only one positive charge here plus okay q now you take one point here at this point yeah you want to bring say point p you want to bring some q naught charge from the infinity up to this point the distance between this charge and this point is small r say small r you want to bring one charge q naught from the infinity to this point otherwise say this is q1 you are bringing q2 charge from the infinity to this point in the field okay then what is the potential at this point due to this q1 charge phi 1 you are already having phi 1 potential here in order to bring one coulomb charge from infinity to this point p we have to do phi 1 work but you are bringing q2 charge from infinity to this point p then you have to do q2 phi 1 q2 phi 1 how much work is needed w is equal to q 2 phi 1 q 2 phi 1 q 2 phi 1 yeah this work will be stored in the system as a interaction energy interaction energy q 2 phi 1 ok similarly if you are having uh, more than two charges every time you have to take uh, two charges into consideration every time Okay, in order to find the interaction energy okay then you will get the general expression for the interaction energy of the system see in this case if you write for phi 1 what is the formula for phi 1 1 by 4 phi epsilon naught uh, q 1 by r so what is the formula for interaction energy or work w is equal to w is equal to 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught q1 q2 by r so this is the interaction energy of the system we call this as u u u is equal to 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught q1 q2 by how much r q1 q2 by this is r in the denominator you are having r right? it is potential or interaction energy here you have r so what is the difference between potential energy and potential in potential formula we have only one q okay in the interaction energy we have two q's always we have two q's that is the difference between the interaction energy and the potential and the potential so here We may write the general uh, expression for this as well. Yeah, 
yeah here you may write the general expression for the interaction energy i already told you that uh, the difference between uh, this potential and potential energy so by using the superposition principle uh, uh, total potential is equal to sum of the potentials phi 1 plus phi 2 plus dash 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 you can see that on the slide okay next uh, what is the formula for the potential energy of the system whenever you are having two charges you already have the formula for the potential energy as 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught uh, q1 q2 by r if you are having more than one charge then what you have to do see you may bring q2 q2 into the field of charge q1 or you may bring q1 into the field of charge q2 okay but both are the uh, same both are the same if you want to write the general formula then what you have to do here for two particles you are getting the two equal terms okay two equal terms that is why you have to write 1 by 2 in that uh, formula okay here you see here otherwise see w is equal to q2 phi 1 plus if you interchange the particles then what happens q1 phi 2 but both are same that is why you have to put 1 by 2 here so you may write the general expression as uh, w is equal to half of q2 phi 1 plus q1 phi 2 q1 phi 2 you may extend this to any number of uh, particles plus dash 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 okay uh, this will be the general formula for the interaction energy of the system of the charges here we have to note the difference between potential and potential energy or potential energy or interaction energy both are same potential energy and pot interaction energy are same but potential and potential energy are not same potential and interaction energy are not same potential is denoted by either phi or v but the interaction energy or potential energy is denoted by the uh, letter u the letter u okay capital u you are, you are already familiar with this notation okay we write total energy as kinetic energy plus potential energy t is equal to hmm, k plus u we write something like that so this is about the difference between potential and potential energy and uh, the interaction and the interaction energy of the system okay let us stop with this okay right thank you